Student loans, y'all. Student loans, man, that is a big topic in America these days, right? Because August 31st, 2022 is a big day in regards to student loans. Possibly uh, one of the biggest, most monumental days when it comes to student loans and its effect on American economics and more specifically what I wanted to touch on, the housing market. Now, you might be like, wait, what, what? What's going on, bro? I watch your show because I invest in real estate. I'm a real estate investor, dude. I don't have any student loans. I'm not a college kid. I don't really care. Hold up, bruh. Hold the phone, man. August 31st, what's going to happen with student loans? It ain't just going to affect the kids trying to pay off their college degrees. It ain't just going to affect the engineers who got big college degrees or, uh, more unfortunately, all the Starbucks baristas who's got to pay off all their student loans wearing their little skinny jeans serving up cafe latte mochas, right? It ain't just them who need to pay attention to August 31st, 2022, folks. It's housing investors, real estate investors, people buying and selling houses. Hell, people trying to buy their own house just to live in. They need to pay attention to the student loan crisis. More specifically, they need to pay attention to what is going to happen on August 31st, 2022, because, folks, it is going to be a big thing. For housing, dude, if you don't think so, you're bat bleep crazy. We're like early, we're early in the video, and uh, I had to bleep that out myself because like some of the guys who, by the way, uh, are college, college graduates, right? Some of the guys that work for me, a lot of the guys that work for me here in the media department at Holton Weiss on Holton Weiss TV, uh, a lot of them, they're always talking about student loans. They got a lot of student loans. But anyway, they're always like, dude. C can you stop dropping so many F-bombs early in the video? It's it's jacking up the algorithm, James. So, you know, I bleeped it out. I bleeped it out for them. I bleeped it out for me. I bleeped it out for you guys. But let's get back on track. Student loans are going to change. The party's over when it comes to the deferment program. And that, in my opinion, is going to have a drastic effect on housing. I want to talk to you guys about what that means, both in the abstract and I want to really like hunker down, narrow in hard, and sink my teeth into some of the data because data is kind of important to what we do, right? We got to buy low, sell high, that kind of thing. Let's go. What up, y'all? Welcome to the show. I am your boy, James Wise, and I talk about real estate, right? This is what I do on this particular show. We do a lot of stuff on Holton Wise TV, uh, all centered around real estate. We have various shows. We show you the good, the bad, the ugly. We answer questions, help you become a more educated real estate buyer and or seller, okay? That's what we do. And today we're talking student loans because student loans and housing are about to freaking intersect, man. They're going to scissor, but not in a cool way. Not in a you're 14, you're in the basement, mom's upstairs, you got Skinamax on. Not that kind of a way, folks, all right? No, no, no. Housing is going to converge with student loans, kind of like when the Titanic hit that friggin' ice thing, right? Iceberg. That was what I was looking for, right? This is big, okay? <clears throat> and to understand it, we got to go back to COVID, right? COVID, COVID hits. Everybody's like, ah, COVID, ah, ah, ah. COVID's bad, right? We all established COVID's bad. I know some, there's like a swath of people watching that don't believe COVID's real. <sighs> COVID was a mess. We could just, COVID was bad. Whatever your thoughts are, we could all agree that COVID was bad. Not, not, COVID wasn't awesome. One of the things that happened uh, with COVID uh, was the government stepped in and they're like, yeah, we need to give people uh, relief, okay? And one of those relief items was uh, student loan deferment, okay? When you have a student loan, right, you had to pay, and then, of course, you're paying interest. And you guys know the deal with the student loan crisis, right? There's people paying student loans 20, 30, 40, 50 friggin' years, dude. You're paying student loans 15 years after you, you die, dude. Student loans are a mess, right? Uh, but the government's like, hey, businesses are shutting down. COVID's jacking up the world. 
uh, we're going we're gonna to stop people. We're going to defer their payments. You don't have to pay any of your student loan debt right now. And on top of that, we're not going to let any additional interest occur during that time period, right? And then, uh, you know, as things went, that kept getting extended and extended and extended and extended until August 31st, 2022. That is the end of the, 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 the student loan deferment. It's over. It ain't going to continue. That's the cutoff date, okay? So what does that mean? What's going to happen, right? Well, you got to kind of understand how things – uh, over that last two years transpired in relation to the housing market. What we had going on during that time, what did we have? We had the lowest interest rates, mortgage rates, right? The lowest mortgages you could get, the lowest interest mortgages pretty much of all time, okay, during this time period, right? So we have record low mortgage payments, number one, okay? Record low, number two, we had all of these kids, all of these young adults coming out of college, right? And we stopped a big amount of their monthly bills, okay? We took that off the table for them, right? So what happened? Housing prices freaking skyrocketed, dude. They Neil Armstrong their way to the freaking stars, right? Because we have money cheaper than it's ever been before, number one. Number two, we take a whole bunch of buyers who is typically one of the largest uh, pools of buyers in this country, right? People with student loans, that general age group, right? A lot of people buying homes in that general age group, right? So we gave them money. We let them borrow money cheaper than they have ever borrowed it before, number one. Number two, we stopped making them pay some of their existing money to their student loans. So what happened? The interest rates, for, or I'm not, I'm sorry, not the interest rates, but the housing prices freaking skyrocketed. They exploded, dude. The data, look at the freaking data, man. We have not seen uh, a rocket ship of housing prices like this ever before. According to Peter Miller on the mortgage reports in July of 2020, the 30-year fixed rate fell below 3% for the first time. And it kept falling to a new record low of just 2.65% in January of 2021. At 2.65% the monthly cost for a $200,000 home loan is $806 a month not counting taxes and insurance. You'd save $662 a month, or $7,900 a year, compared to the 8% long-term average. Also according to Education Data Initiative, with federal student debt totaled at $1.57 trillion, the majority of federal student debt is concentrated with Generation X. The average baby boomer with student loans tends to owe more than the average millennial. However, on the national scale, millennials have a larger overall debt than baby boomers. If you look at this chart, Generation Z held 7.37% of the total $1.57 trillion student loan debt. Millennials held 31.94% of the total debt. Generation X held most of the debt at 38.4%. Baby boomers own 16.73% of the federal student debt. The silent generation accounted for 5.54% of the debt. 0.02% of the debt remained unaccounted for between the age groups. 0.3 remain unaccounted, belonging to none of the age groups. On top of all of that data, right? On top of all that, dude, right? On top of all of those reasons which cause that massive, like, just massive amount of housing inflation, we also had uh, other things, too, like the, the new home construction industry. Don't forget what happened with that, right? Y'all remember the freaking lumber shortages and stuff, right? All those COVID-related shutdowns and things of that nature, dude. They really threw the housing market in an uproar uh, because builders were unable to pick up lumber and supplies uh, efficiently and more uh, importantly than that, possibly, cost effectively. According to the National Association of Home Builders, the price of framing lumber averaged roughly $550 in 2020 and nearly $850 in 2021, each a new annual record.
Even after adjusting for inflation, the average price of framing lumber in 2021 was 17% above its 25-year average and broke the prior record set in 1996. You got a low inventory of homes. You have all these buyers getting money for cheaper than they've ever got it before, and their disposable income is higher, right? That, folks, that's really what propelled the real estate bubble. And I believe August 31st, 2022 is the day that some beep pops, okay? It pops. Now, we've already seen. We've already started to see it, guys. Uh, the market is starting to correct itself, right? Prices are coming down. Right. For anybody that's just been paying attention to real estate, I don't know, for like the last decade, y'all don't know what it's like to deal with a market where the real estate prices are coming down. Right. Y'all probably just used to like, oh, I buy it for this price and then it's worth this. Then it's worth that. Then it's worth it just keeps going up. But, you know, these markets, folks, they do kind of correct. Right. So uh, what I think is going to happen is I think we're going to continue to see uh, a housing correction and it's geared right towards these student loans because now to combat to combat all of that inflation and housing price increase and all that jazz that I just been rambling and rambling on about to combat that right the fed they're raising interest rates so now interest rates are higher right so all them dudes and ladies out there uh, that were borrowing money now the cost to borrow that money is more expensive number 1 number 2 the amount of money they have to make their mortgage payments is now less because starting August 31st, 2022, they now have to get back to paying their student loans with interest, right? So what does that mean for housing investors? That means, guys, we got to pay attention out there. Uh, I think we're going to see a little bit of a housing correction here, right? So what, what, is that, what does that mean? What do we got to do, James? Does that mean we just stop buying houses, things like that? No, dude, that doesn't mean we stop buying houses. But we got to get smarter about what we're buying, number one. Number two, we got to realize we're starting to see a little bit of a shift here into a buyer's market, which is nice, right? It kind of sucks when you see a house for 100 grand and you're like, ah, oh, I want it, 120. And then the sellers are like, nah, fuck you. I sold it for 160. I had 47,000 offers. You know, that kind of blows, right? Uh, but now I think we're starting to, to see a shift. We're starting to to get into more of a, of a buyer's market. And uh, that's great for a lot of the super savvy investors out there. A lot of you guys out there have been just sitting on the sidelines, right? A lot of you guys were active 09, 2010, 11, 2012, 2013, 2014, right? Then you kind of sat on the sidelines. Prices exploded. I'm sure a lot of you sold off a lot of your assets. I know I did, dude. I made a lot of money. Uh, and now it's like, boom coming back down a little bit so now i think a lot of you guys are going to be uh probably just chomping at the bit when you see some of these prices drop and you start to see some of these properties sitting on the market uh a little bit longer than normal what you're used to seeing over the last uh, friggin' half decade or so right now it's time for you guys to start chomping at the bit and really putting together good deals running your analysis making sure uh, that the properties are going to cash flow now because over the long haul, it's probably still, right? It's probably still going to go back up, right? If you look at real estate in this country over the last, I don't know, 50 years, the data says it keeps going up. According to Visual Capitalist, the U.S. real estate market has seen an average appreciation of 4.4% annually since 1991. High demand and low supply have accelerated price growth during the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, single-family home prices grew by 18.7% from quarter 1 of 2021 to quarter 2 of 2022. This one-year price increase varies by state reaching as high as 29.8% in Florida. So with that, right, with that correction that I believe we're about to see, right, I want you guys hunkering down, getting smarter about your buy place right i don't want you guys stopping i want you guys getting smarter i want you guys getting more aggressive right with what you buy number one number two i want you guys going to more cash right going to more cash assets right uh the stock market that's all jacked up right now right i'm not a big stock guy okay uh i own holton wise i own a lot of real estate i like real estate because it's real it's physical i could touch it and i could uh have a big um 
say in how it's uh, ran, managed, right? Uh, if I invest in Tesla or, I don't know, Facebook or whatever, right? I don't have any say what Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk do, right? If Elon Musk wants to run around waving his ball sack at Twitter for months on end, not paying attention to what he's supposed to be doing at Tesla. It doesn't have anything to do with me. I can't control that. If that makes the Tesla stock go down, I'm screwed, right? So I like to keep my money uh, in my business and uh, assets that I can control, right? So with where you guys are at, with the fluctuations that we're seeing, uh, the fact that I think a big correction uh, is right here, it's going to continue for a little bit, man. I think you guys should pull some of that money back, right? Go to a more cash-friendly position. Then, when you're negotiating back and forth with these sellers, well, guess what? You could uh, really make your offers stand out, your lowball offers. They could really stand out because cash is king now, especially in a buyer's market. You got all that cash. You got that leverage. Like, hey, Mr. Seller, I see you're having a hard time selling your particular property and all those freaking kids uh, coming out of college. Uh, well, you know, guess what? Now they lost like fifty dollars to $100,000 of buying power based on interest rates being higher. And, oh, guess what? August 31st, 2022, now they got another five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800 a month student loan payment affecting their uh, friggin' their DTR. They're in trouble. How about this nice, beautiful cash offer? You, you, you know what I'm saying, guys? So we could still be out there and good good deals. In fact, in a falling market, we can probably get better deals uh, than otherwise, right? So student loans, man. If you're not somebody with student loans, you may not have been paying attention to them. But that, folks, is why they're important to real estate investors like me, real estate investors like you, because they are really going to throw a wrench in the housing market, folks. And uh, that's why I wanted you guys to pay attention to them. And, of course, make sure you subscribe here on Holden Wise TV for more info, topics, entertainment, and deal flow here on Holden Wise TV. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holden Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.